congratulations and welcome to the Female Bond Fellowship. So I just wanted to take today off to like kick things off and um, walk you through the purpose of the fellowship, a bit about like uh, about a bit about me, um, why fixed income, like markets today, and a bit about scheduling and the next steps as well. So a bit about me, um, I think knowing about my background helps understand why I started this fellowship. So I'm the founder of the Female Bond Fellowship and the, the background of the fellowship is closely tied to my, very, my own background. Um, at BlackRock as a quantitative researcher and at, at PIMCO uh, in the portfolio management division. At PIMCO, I was supporting the CIO and managing the Dynamic Bond Fund and the Dynamic Bond Fund um, really invest in everything under the sun. And I found that I really enjoy learning about emerging markets. Um, given that I had close ties with Asia um, growing up here, um, I am considering all the activity taking place in Asia right now with the rise of China and also the decline of China nowadays. Um, I thought that I wanted to come here and learn about EM, Asia market, and I now started working at Silverdale Capital. Uh, so I've been working at Silverdale Capital, which is a hedge fund focused on an investment grade fixed income short duration bonds for the past four months. I'm working in the portfolio management division and supporting the credit team here. How do you like it, Rumi? I do, I do. It's very different from the US, but it's a good difference, I think, um, for me to like get a diversity of perspectives. Um, and also the working environment, I realized, I didn't think about it as much, but the difference in how Asia works versus the US works is actually quite poignant when I'm here in terms of like work culture, um, even just like daily communication and things like that. Um, so as for the purpose of the fellowship and kind of like why I wanted to start this off was that during my time at PIMCO and also previously at BlackRock, I realized there was definitely um, a stark gap in the availability of mentorship opportunities for young professionals. For example, organizations like Girls Who Invest support those who are in college and the organizations like Women's Bond Club, which has a scholarship for high schoolers and the Rising Star Award for people with five to eight years of experience. But there's nothing really in between. And as a young professional, I really missed having this community of people who would which I could discuss, bounce ideas off in this really like foundational period in my career. Um, and during my time at PIMCO, I noticed that all three of my five um, female colleagues uh, decided that the isolation with, um, in the industry they experienced uh, made them want to leave the industry altogether. And I realized that with more guidance, perhaps this statistic could also be changed. Uh, so that was a primary motivation, and also that also is the reason why the age uh, for this fellowship is between 21, 21 and 30 years old, because it's really this, this foundational period in your life that you're probably deciding whether this is the career for you, what exactly should, should your niche be, and how exactly you can establish yourself further on as well. So as I like started researching further and I mean, just looking around, even in the office and three offices I've been at, it was clear that there's something like definitely off here. But looking into this further, the reality check was pretty much clear. So like drawing on, on CityWire's database of about 17,500 people um, and portfolio managers worldwide, the, the report showed that only 12% of these people um, are female. And Last year, this amount was 11.8%. So there was like only a 0.8%, a 0.2% increase. By the way this is going, it would take about 200 years to reach gender parity in this industry. Uh, so <laughs> that's just like ridiculous. And I think there's like something definitely needs to be changed here. Um, and asset management as a sector definitely talks a lot about diversity, diversity of investment, how sustainable they are about like ESG, the portfolio of companies they're investing in and things like that. And for this industry, um, this statistic from a ground up level is um, something that really should be challenged and something that I want this community um, and I hope this community can address. 
Um, and I guess the gap it also exists for a reason. And the reasons are sort of ingrained in perhaps a bit of the finance industry, but more so the asset management industry, um, which and the fixed income at, by its nature as well. One is that there's a low turnover um, sort of magnification in the industry because uh, people like investment firms and uh, endowments prize those firms that don't churn out more employees. Uh, so that means that women who are like planning to like plan their career in the upcoming years um, may be at a disadvantage because as a, they can't hire portfolio managers who would leave and ruin the track record of the company. So we have a speaker um, from Maybank Asset Management uh, called Rachna Mehta, who is now the head of Asia uh, Fixed Income here. And she's, I spoke to her recently and she'll be talking to us in the fellowship later. And she really spoke about how she managed to maintain a track record while also maintaining a family um, and uh, things like that. And making sure that the company doesn't Re replace her immediately after she goes on like a two month long maternity leave period. Um, so just things like that, I think the, I want the fellowship to tackle and help us like navigate because I'm sure these are questions that everybody's thought about um, and also would, I think, um, be beneficial to like understand how to navigate as well. And I guess there's other few reasons are just like stereotypical Wall Street culture. Um, the, the idea of like buy side being the boys club sort of a situation or like fixed income being extremely quant driven sort of un, ununderstandable by the um, normal public because it's kind of archaic to the uh, general people is what the culture I got from before entering the industry as well. So I guess that all leads to like the motivation for the structure of the fellowship as well. Uh, so the structure of the fellowship is essentially three parts. One would be the speaker series, uh, where we get speakers like Rachna to speak to us. And then there's somebody called Tanya from Wellington. And she has extremely rich experience in the portfolio management industry. Um, she's got 30 years of experience across Wellington and another firm. Um, and uh, she can talk about how she's dealt with like pressures, um, navigating Boston, New York, um, then she moved to Asia as well, um, not now in her career, and how she's dealt with different cultural nuances of each in each step of her career. And also now that she's a managing director, how she's managing people higher up and also how she's managing people um, lower than her. And then the second part of it would be the mentorship part. I think this part is something that would really benefit us in the sense that one-on-one -on -one interaction with people in the industry who've had an understanding of what's going on um, and things like that. And then the third part would be education oriented, which would be um, essentially learning more about the basics of fixed income or the nuances in the market um, and going on to more complex things like credit derivatives and uh, like trading on a day to day basis, ESG and things like that. Uh, so the thing I'd like to emphasize in this is that attendance and active participation is extremely encouraged. We'll have like a lot of speakers um, from obviously um, really great firms and really senior up who are excited about speaking to us and um, really preparing and asking them questions as you find relevant and things like that. It's really meant to be a fellowship for you guys to like create a community between us um, hopefully something that we can all lean into on a lifetime basis. Um, so I'm also hoping that this can be more biannual. This is of course the first cohort, uh, but something that like this can occur more often uh, and we can build like a six uh, people each term cohort across the next couple of years. Um, and yeah, there's an 11% acceptance rate, really emphasizing on the people who seem to me that uh, were actually like super passionate about this industry. I do hope that it didn't hope that it would be that selective because it's meant to be more exclusive, inclusive. Um, but hopefully, as this uh, goes on, I'm hoping that the tight knit community can branch out to offer to other people support as well. Um, I want to shift to this part, which is the introductions, and then Sean, if you need to 
sort of bounce for your Italy trip, it's totally fine. Um, so if we could just go around, talk about like introducing yourself, where you work, and what maybe like a fun fact about yourself, or if you think it's fun, why fixed income? Yeah. Shun, do you want to start? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Uh, my name is Shun. I went to UC Berkeley, so graduated from there with a the business degree. I am now working at uh, Asana, which is like a software company as their go-to-market strategic finance analyst. Um, before that, I was working at investment banking um, at Wells Fargo. Um, Fun fact, <laughs> I used to not have fun facts, or I hate fun facts, but now on the Switzerland trip, uh, I actually got a fun fact now because I almost got stranded with my friends <laughs> on the island. And then like the boat has to come back and like all the people on the boat were watching us like, because we were like, no, come back the boat. Um, so that's like a fun fact now. Um, yeah, <laughs> but anyhow, Wait, did you nice get to meet you all. So it's like this, Lake call Lake Brienz, where the crash landing on your K drama um, shooting happens, the, the little scene shoots. Um, and then, yeah, we were like on the way back to our hotel. And then we obviously just got like confused with the stop. I don't even know what happened, but yeah. <laughs> so, so that's a fun fact now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I binge watch that. Yeah. Cool. Um, oh, and then I guess the female bond, I guess like the bond, why bond for fixed income. Um, yeah, I've been like on the equity side and like not, don't really know a lot about fixed income stuff. So like, I think this is a great opportunity to learn from speakers and also um, learn about, you know, your experiences as well, Irvi, and also like, you know, other, meet other people like other fellows. So I'm super excited. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Adiksha. Sure. Okay. Um, by the way, thanks for organizing this. It, it is such a good go-to place. Um, like you said, we feel um, alone or we, we need mentorship. So uh, thanks for um, starting this fellowship program. And um, nice to meet all of you. I'm Hitiksha. I'm based out of San Francisco. And I graduated from UCLA Anderson um, with Master's in Financial Engineering in 2020. And I joined BlackRock um rejoined BlackRock and um now I'm working as a quantitative researcher um in the multi-asset uh, multi-asset strategy and solutions team and uh, focusing on the retirement funds of BlackRock the target date uh, funds and um fun fact about me uh so uh, I had assisted my uh, dad in as an like assistant assistant direct director and producer in a documentary film uh, back in India that was on uh, equitation or horse riding uh, with uh, for uh, the, it was a training film for the Indian police officers there. And uh, I, I just love that uh, field like as a, it's, it's very diverse. So um, I, I plan to do some photography or short filmmaking on the side. That's just one fun fact about me and um, about interest in the bond market or fixed income. I have actually just started with the multi-asset strategy team, um, but I do want to, I, I do think that um, fixed income has, like it shows direct impact um, of the economy or changes in the economy. And I've always been interested in subjects um, of fixed income. So I'm looking forward um, to how it's applied in the corporate world. Yeah. Ooh, wow, that's so cool. Documentary. <laughs> Way yeah. more creative than anything I could do. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good field. Great. Christine, you wanna go? Sure. So hi everyone. I'm Christine Waltmer. Um I'm currently working as a treasury analyst at a cybersecurity firm called Palo Alto Networks, which is actually not based out of Palo Alto, it's based in Santa Clara. Um, but I'm currently working out of Orange County, which is a little south of uh, Los Angeles. And at Palo Alto Networks, I'm helping to manage our internal investment portfolio. So all investment grade, short duration, fixed income securities, um, and have been there for a little over a year now. 
And then prior to that, I was working at a multifamily office based out of the Bay Area called Tiedemann Advisors, helping with client portfolios, implementation, all that good stuff. Um, but that was mostly across all asset classes. So basically looking to get a deeper dive into fixed income as my role has switched from you know, all asset classes to more focused on just fixed income securities now. Um, fun fact about me is that I like to bake a lot. So every weekend I bake bread or um, muffins or whatever I feel like making over the, over the weekend. So yeah, nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. Um, what do you want? Yes. Um, so I'm Li Wen. I'm currently a graduate student at Columbia University. So I noticed fixed income when I applied for a summer internship at BlackRock for the multi-asset team. So well, I'm still waiting for the result, like still in the application process, but it draws my attention to fixed income because so usually we see a lot of like portfolio manager or equity research, but not that much about fixed income market. So I just pay attention to that and I found it's interesting. And also the market share of the bond market is really amazing. So I look forward to exploring more with all of you and really um, looking forward to having a great journey with you. Um, a fun fact about me, um, um, I would say dancing. I like dancing when I have free time. So yeah. Ooh, what do you dance? Like which um, type of dance? Um, I usually do ballet, but also some modern dance. Oh, cool. Um, thanks, Liwen. Clarissa, you're on the call. Thank you all. Mm. Okay. Well, Michelle, I don't know if she, where she is, but she sent me a fun fact, so I can just introduce her to you guys. Um, she is a math major, she works at PIMCO, she's a portfolio analyst, and um, she is interested in fixed income because of its sensitivity on policy rate change, and it's more math intensive and predictable than um, equities. And as a math major, that's what really draws her to fixed income. And a fun fact about her is that she runs a personal website and keeps writing, um, keep, has been writing a diary for the past 10 years. And then um, Clarissa, I don't see, her. like I think, okay, she's here. Okay. Sorry, Hi. I'm just at, I'm at work, so I had to step off for a little bit. Um, so um, I'm Clarissa, I am um, currently working on the electronic desk at JP Morgan in Singapore. Um, please tell me if I could see more on FX, but you know, um, this year, I'm studying a little bit more on the fixed income side, so I'm interested to get to know a bit more in the broader, broader space of fixed income. I think it's a very interesting space, especially, you know, as um, more like China and India get to put into the um, global bond indices. I think that's a growing space, especially in Asia. So I am looking forward to get to know all of you and um, to learn together with all of you. And thanks so much for inviting us um, on this journey. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, fun fact. I forgot, totally forgot about that one. I like wake surfing. So in my free time, I like wake surfing um, at Pongo in Singapore. Oh, what very cool. Thank you, Clarissa. Thank you. Um, okay. So, yeah, so I just wanted to go over what makes fixed income so special um, and why I think everybody in finance should really be in fixed income, like what drew me towards it as well. So fixed income as a market space is twice as large as the, the stock market. Um, they offer less risk than stocks and it's more amenable to quant. Um, and in the current market environment, fixed income even offers higher returns than um, equities. And reasons why people didn't really invest in fixed income earlier and preferred investing in equities because it was like high risk, but high reward as well. Now it's like low risk, but higher reward. So 
It's, it's, I think it's a very interesting time to be involved in fixed income and um, get to understand this market space a bit better. And a bit about, more about the current market space. Uh, I wanted to share kind of some of my findings from work with you guys. And um, okay, Shun, bye. Yeah, so enjoy Italy. Um, so the current market space I think is more interesting than it has been ever before. It's been the weirdest market since 1868. So looking at the chart um, on the right here, we see that 2022 markets have really been a massive outlier in terms of their returns um, so far. For the past one year, each week at work um, at PEMCO and at Silverdale, I've noticed that the con continuous conversation or dialogue in the office is that this week is the craziest week yet. And that's been the craziest, each week has been the craziest since the start of the year. But the thing is, we still see patterns. And in terms of numbers, um, things are sort of lining up. Uh, so as the Fed keeps on tightening its monetary policies, increasing interest rates, we do see inflation at a decline. Um, and now we see that the two-year break-even of the Treasury is around an 18-month low at like 2.16%. So it, it's this time where the Fed and there's so much conversation and dialogue occurring in the market um, that we can see who's really winning in the market. I read this quote by the head of um, Macro at Fidelity a few days ago, and it's he said that um, looking at the global mon money supply, which is the graph on the left, he's like he said that when the tide falls, you can really see, see who's swimming naked. Um, and I thought that was a really interesting quote to um, to. Um, exactly explain what's going on in the markets these days. Um, the people who are able to understand these markets are really the ones who are able to get ahead as well. So I'm not sure about how exactly um, everybody's level about understanding about fixed income, but I'm happy to go into the nitty gritties a bit more. Uh, so, so let me know if you have questions about what I'm saying and things like that. Anytime, just interrupt. So. Uh, so like I was saying, for the first time in the past 12 years, US corporate triple B bonds actually yield higher than S&P 500 returns. So no longer does it make sense to close our minds and like invest in the S&P 500, not think about what we're doing. It really make, it does pay off to understand the bond markets a bit better and see where, where this would take us. And particularly markets like emerging markets would really pay off understanding in this time. And after all, there's so much talk about recession and day-to-day -day basis. It's almost like a lunchtime conversation um, that even people who don't understand finance altogether uh, are talking about a, a conversation of recession because it impacts everybody. And historically, when we look at the past few recessions, we noticed that um, the best performing asset classes six months before and 12 months after has been fixed income. In this graph, we see that the drawdowns are the least for fixed income. So that's the orange line um, and the blue and uh, the pink line as well. So with the recession, maybe Q, Q1 2024, Q2 2024, as soon as Q3 uh, uh, of this year, uh, Q4 end of this year, uh, knowing about fixed income would really benefit us. And I hope that our speakers can also shed light um, more about this. Also, in the past few years, we've always been talking about negative bond yields, um, them being extra low. And it's been really difficult to find opportunities where you can get extra uh, ordinary returns. Um, now that the Fed has increased interest rates and tightened monetary policy, um, we do see a lot of potential for our investment here in this space. In this chart by um, PIMCO, we can see that the yields are much higher at a starting point. Uh, so 8.8% yields for munis, that's never been uh, there before in like the past 20 years. Um, history of munis. Munis are meant to be the boring creatures in the fixed income market that nobody really wants to traverse uh, because they're stable assets, but nothing that can ever be that exciting. So 
What this means is that if you invest in a bond with a four-year yield today, you may earn approximately four-year average annual returns on that bond. And historically, yields and returns have had a 94% correlation. In terms of going into more nitty gritties about where we are exactly in the market cycle. Um, wait, sorry, I just wanna pause here. Just everything I've said makes sense or is it a bit confusing or um, like just checking face? Good, okay. If there's any questions, let me know. So, and then we notice that when yields peak, uh, we do notice that strong performance typically follows. So historically, bond yields have tended to peak towards the end of the business cycles. And when they do peak, strong, strong performance um, we, is subsequently uh, visualized. The chart, chart here really shows that what happened after bond yields peak during the five more, most recent major market downturns. And as you can see in this chart, uh, both core and investment grade corporate bonds as measured by their respective indices came roaring back a year after each peak rewarding each patient investor with active returns, attractive returns. And essentially the, the reason behind this is that you lock in yields um, when you buy a fixed income a security. And there's always that characteristic of pull to par. So while there may be like daily fluctuations, your bond value can decrease to like a 20, um, uh, 20 cents to a dollar value, you'll get the $1, uh, 100 uh, full value at maturity at the end of it. So yeah, that was the, the brief overview of the current markets. Um, I do want to ask if you guys would be interested in getting like more basics of fixed income um, session or like some of you, if, um, that would be helpful, which would be like covering like basics of fixed income securities, yield, coupon, um, impact of like Fed's decision implications. I'm a bit unsure, as you could sense of where exactly everybody's level is. So I do want to see if I can equalize that if there's a disparity or um, incongruency there. So do you think that might be helpful, you guys? Yeah, I think some basic might be helpful. Okay, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And what about you guys, Christine and Diksha? Sure. Um, yeah. I'm not sure, like, I, Christine, since you're dealing with fixed income on a daily basis, would you want me to go through? I can also do like like one on one sessions. Um, I'm happy to sit in on that, or if I can't make it, if you want to record, if you would be willing to record it. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Yeah, same here. Okay, it's um, a good refresher, I guess. Sorry, it'll be a good refresher. Okay, yeah, yeah I'll do that. Yeah, I think we can do a more deep dive, um, because I'm afraid of losing people in, in some of the jargon. Cause I think that sometimes it can just get confusing. Um, personally, I find some parts of it confusing until I really look into why the numbers are the way they are or like where conversation, the why yield affects interest rates and things like that. Um, okay, yeah, are you so thinking of doing that in like a separate um, date? I think just because it's um, quite packed Right now, I might record yeah. it and share it with you guys. Might be easier for everybody to go through in their own time. Or what I can do is um, honestly like one-on-one -on -one schedule based on each person's time preference. And I can go through like what each person finds difficult and um, or has kind of questions about. It's kind of up to you guys. Yeah, maybe I'll record it and then people can ask questions before the next session or something like that. Might be easier selling. Sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, just for like overall scheduling. Uh, so next week we'll have a product, fixed income product session uh, with Tira. She's a product um, specialist at PIMCO. Uh, she'll be more technical than I was in this session. So I'll try to send out the fixed income basics between now and Sunday. Um, and uh, after that, we have credit derivatives with Manasi, who's on the good Goldman trading floor. Uh, she works uh, closely with portfolio managers on the buy side while being on the sell side as well. Um, then we have more of a quantitative uh, insight with Naman Jain, who's works at Citadel 
on portfolio management. Uh, he works in a quantitative fund on discretionary portfolio management, which I think would be a really interesting insight to get, um, get in particular. And also he's a very, very young portfolio manager. He graduated from Princeton in 2018 and in five, four years he became a PM. So I think we can ask him a bunch of questions on that and he's super nice about um, explaining us his uh, career trajectory. He's very excited to be the only guy speaking as well. And he was like, are you sure you want me to speak? I was like, yeah, no one can speak. Um, and then afterwards we have uh, a more ESG insight with Mar Marianne, who is the head of ESG at Aberdeen. Um, and Aberdeen actually, fun fact, has the best diversity statistics in the whole fixed income industry. They have the most, most number of female portfolio managers and she's been directly working with the diversity efforts at Aberdeen. So we can ask her questions about that as well. Um, then Karishma Kaul, I think, Katiksha, you might know her. Um, she used to work at BlackRock San Francisco when I was working there. And now she's running the systematic strategies at Fidelity Investments. She's also based, based out of SF. Um, then I mentioned Rachna, I'm a huge fan of her. Works at Maybank, head of fixed income Asia. Um, out here, she is really, really um, disciplined in the way she approaches life and her career overall. Uh, she's done pretty much everything in fixed income since she's been working in the industry since like 1993. And in my conversation with her, she spoke to the World Bank about changing policies because her fixed income portfolio is needed uh, World Bank's bonds to do well. So she's really been in it, um, in the weeds of everything. Um, and then we'll have like more in-depth technical analysis credit research with my colleague here at Silverdale um, about credit uh, analysis from a fundamental perspective. And then Tanya also mentioned she's from Wellington, managing director can tell us more about like cultural nuances and portfolio management. And finally, we'll be a bit more futuristic, talk about the future of fixed income. Uh, I think there are a lot of important and interesting points to note there. For example, fixed income markets currently are what equities were maybe like 30 years ago in terms of automation, technology. So many things uh, for fixed income are kind of behind the curve uh, when compared to equities. So there's a lot of um, opportunity there in terms of really making your name in the industry. And yeah, so as I mentioned here, like obviously message me if you wanna, um, sorry, one sec. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and then yeah, happy to go one-on-one -on -one to go over anything, like message me about things and I'll be try to be on top of um, replying and things like that um and as for the mentorship i'm going to send over like your matches for the mentorship program to you guys um in the next two weeks or so and i aim that we can have about three mentorship sessions so and the mentors have been given like a guide about how to exactly approach that but i hope that you guys can also if you have questions um, and if there's a specific mentor you'd want to see uh, me to reach out to, I can also do that on your behalf. Or if you have a specific profile, like for example, um, I'm just making this up, but hey teacher, if you want to be matched with somebody who's more in the quantitative PM realm, let me know. Or like Christine, if you want to be matched with somebody who's like more in, focused on like the tech industry or um, tech investment management side of things, um, let me know that as well. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot. I know this was um, a decent amount to cover in a short amount of time. And I also sped up through a lot of things. Um, I will share the deck with you guys later. And as always, I'm really, really open to suggestions. This, as I mentioned, is meant to be like more of an interactive community. Uh, and I hope that this is helpful to you guys. It's meant to be not like a school or like college lecture. Um, it's meant to be more like a conversation, um, a place where we can bounce ideas off, share resources with. 
Um, and as such, I hope that we can use Slack on a day-to-day -day basis uh, to share resources, share interesting articles, um, reach out to one another. And I'd encourage all of you to like, perhaps maybe if you're in the same city, um, grab coffee, uh, really lean in and interact with all of you because I'm extremely inspired by your backgrounds and um, would love to learn more about um, each one of you individually. Uh, so I've also linked here four newsletters that I think um, are especially insightful. So uh, they're clickable links. When I share the presentation out, you can subscribe. I think they give a good perspective about the market, what's going on, how like people analyze it. I worked with Tony Crescenzi quite closely um, and his newsletters in particular I would recommend because he talks about like key takeaways in an interesting, not boring fashion, which is in my mind key um, to traversing fixed income. And I post a decent amount on the Instagram about like interesting things in the market, some memes, so if you wanna follow that. And of course, keep up with the website, um, but I'll be sending the important details to you by email and on Slack. Does anybody have questions? Okay. <laughs> thank you for putting us together. Yeah, thank you so much for participating, guys. I'm so happy to see so many um, people who are interested in the industry. And yeah, any suggestions, um, yeah, please, please let me know. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, like five times, billion times, it's meant to be for you um, more than anything. Okay. Okay. Um, if not, I will let you guys go to sleep. And <laughs> Clarissa, I'll let you enjoy your lunch break. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you.